Hi, I'm Charlene Collins Freeman, and welcome to my tutorial on painting silhouettes in watercolor. The supplies I use for this demo include Arches Cold Press Watercolor Paper. I have these great blocks that are 5.9 inches by 11.8 inches, but you can use whatever size you want. You'll need a watercolor brush, and I use a round brush. It's a black gold 311 size 00. Of course, you'll need water in a water container, paper towels, and I'm using Daniel Smith watercolor paints. Feel free to use whatever brand and whatever colors you prefer. We're not going for natural skin tones, so anything goes. A fun, quick exercise to teach yourself to ignore the details, simplify shapes, and really start to understand proportions is to study and paint silhouettes of people. I really love this exercise, and it'll help you understand the overall shapes of the figure and how they affect each other. It's a mistake to assume that figure painting consists of explaining all the details and painting sort of an inventory of the anatomy. Start by just observing. You can Google silhouettes of people or look at your own photographs. Remember that a silhouette is really just looking at the outline of a person. You can start by making your silhouette studies rather small, maybe two inches tall, like I'm doing here. If you're concerned about wasting good paper on these exercises, feel free to use student grade paper. Even drawing paper is fine. But allow yourself to take chances and experiment. The more comfortable you can get with just flowing into the figure, the better your figure studies will be. Try not to outline your figure with your paintbrush and then paint it in. Rather, try to paint each shape by using your entire brush. Use the entire brush to draw the head, the arms, the torso, those legs, and even the shadow shapes. The point of this exercise is really to broaden your understanding of the figure. In doing these quick studies, you'll quickly realize if your proportions are wrong. Typically, when we're starting out, we'll make the legs too short and the torso too long, and this shows up immediately in these silhouette studies. So after you've painted a few, stop and study what you've painted. Do your proportions need to be corrected before you continue on? And you can also study the movements. Are you bending arms and legs in places where they just wouldn't bend? Correct that too before continuing to paint another row of silhouettes. You can see that I'm starting to increase their size slightly. And the more you paint and study what you're doing, the more you'll like what you're creating. This is a really fun exercise. Occasionally, you'll create some real beauties along the way. You'll notice that I'm being pretty arbitrary about the colors I'm choosing. And that's another fun, liberating way to paint. I'm letting colors flow into each other and just paying attention to which mixes turn out well and which ones I don't like so much. Besides helping me warm up for figure painting and better understand proportions and the movements of the human body, I find that these figures are also really helpful when I'm out sketching. And also if you do landscapes, you might find that your landscape will be more interesting if you're willing to drop in a few of these figures. Begin by studying the silhouettes and then begin your painting. Paint the masses of the form. 
think in terms of the overall shapes that describe the pose. And please stay away from details. You'll notice I'm not painting in skin tones. Anything goes. The point is really to try to get away from thinking in terms of literal figures. Take advantage of this exercise to play with color mixes. Keep your brush strokes large and fresh. Don't overwork. Don't keep going into an area to try to correct it. Once you get comfortable with these, try adding some shadows. It's not necessary to add the shadows if you're just studying figure studies, but if you're adding these to your sketches or your landscape paintings, it's a nice way to ground your figures to the landscape. Even in these studies, it's a pretty fun element to add. Another takeaway from this exercise is how quickly a few brush strokes can start to look like a figure if the movement is correct and the proportions are correct. Look at how little I've had to put down for these to look like a row of people. As you paint your silhouettes, stop to study them and ask yourself, do they look like people? Or am, are my proportions getting off? Are the movements not looking natural? Maybe you're painting the head too big or too small. Make corrections as you study your own silhouettes and you'll find that you get better and better at understanding the human figure. As you get comfortable with these small studies, you can then try to do them a little bit larger, which I'll do in just a few minutes. The goal will then be to try to get to paint these at least six inches tall, but it's definitely easier to start out small. You can make up your own poses for these silhouettes. Or you can Google silhouettes of people and come up with a lot to choose from. Try copying what you find. Remember to stay away from details. You can add interest with shadows or pets or shopping bags or canes. Here you can see me adding another color into the silhouette I just painted while it's still wet, creating a wet into wet effect, making this silhouette more interesting, and creating a shadow for the dog and the walker, and dropping in paint while that's still wet. Be sure that your shadow is connected to whichever foot is touching the ground. If the shadow and the foot aren't touching, it will look like your figure is levitating above the ground. My goal is to fill up this sheet of paper with more and more silhouettes, dropping wet paint into wet paint, creating some shadows, playing with poses, and trying to understand the proportions of the figure better. I've sped up the video as you see me fill in these shapes. Here I'm starting to make my figure slightly bigger. And you can see as I paint this green one in, I paint her feet going in two different directions. I quickly realize uh, that doesn't work. So I wet one of the feet to confuse the direction it's headed in. And that's really all it needs to be corrected. These subtle little changes are all you need to do for these silhouettes. Hopefully this will help you loosen up regarding how precise you think your figures have to be to look accurate.
Once you've filled up a sheet with this small silhouette style, it's time to try bigger silhouettes. As you start practicing larger silhouettes, try to keep the same spontaneous approach. Bold brush strokes, mixing wet and wet paint, not getting into details. There is a temptation that the larger we make our figure, the more we want to bog down into details. And there is a time that you can do that, but these silhouettes is not that time. Force yourself to stay spontaneous, use sweeping brush strokes, study those body movements, proportions, and get comfortable with confident brush strokes. And hopefully this exercise will help you let go of the obstacle of needing to paint perfect figures. Some of these quick silhouettes will look better than others. Just keep practicing. After filling up a sheet with these medium sized silhouettes, I want to fill up a sheet with slightly bigger still. After adding a couple of shadows, I'm ready to try the bigger silhouettes. You'll notice that I'm doing a little bit of paint mixing on my palette and some of it I'm just letting it mix on the paper. This is called direct painting. I paint with one shade and then I go in, dip my brush, pick up a new color and just paint right into the wet shape that is already on my paper. This is my favorite type of ways to mix pigments. It's always kind of an unexpected result and can be pretty exciting. You can see that as my silhouettes have gotten bigger, I'm able to add more description to them than I could with the really small silhouettes. I'm looking more at the silhouette of the folds of the clothes, maybe some of their accessories, but still I want to stay away from details. These silhouettes are about five inches tall and I want to do one more study, flipping my block of paper on its side it's almost 12 inches tall and I want to fill it up with two silhouettes. Try not to keep going back into your silhouettes to quote unquote correct the paint mix or correct the shapes. Try mixing your paints on your palette only slightly. As you get more comfortable, do most of the mixing on the paper like I'm doing here. If you want to practice realistic skin tones, Keep in mind that people tend to have warmer colors, reds and yellows, on their arms and legs, and cooler colors, more in the blues, on their torso. Once your brush touches the paper, make your stroke and try not to go back in to correct things. This guarantees that you'll start getting away from overworking your figures. Let the watercolor and the water do the work for you. Just move on to the next figure. Try to paint the head and arms in a single brush stroke, right away next to each other. 
the head doesn't even really even need to connect to the torso. If your brush is too small, you'll end up dabbing on the paint and that never looks good. So if your brush is really small and you have to keep reloading, it's time to work with a slightly bigger brush. As you paint the figure, use the whole brush to paint, not just the tip. You'll start to notice which colors mix better with each other and which brush strokes give you the best results. Here you see me making his head slightly bigger to accommodate the proportions. And then it's time to call this done. You'll improve more quickly by doing a lot of these and moving on, as opposed to just doing a couple and trying to rework them to be perfect. I hope you're inspired to paint your own silhouettes and that you have found this tutorial informative. Thanks for watching.